this module on default VCN and internal uh, DNS. My name is Rohit Rai and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud infrastructure team. So first things uh, first, this comes up in the, in the exam as well. Uh, your VCN automatically comes with some default components. There is a default route table, there is a default security list and a default set of DHCP options. And uh, we have been using some of these until now. Uh, we have been using the default route table. We have been using the default security list. We have not really looked into the default set of DHCP options. You cannot delete these default components. However, you can change their contents. You can change what rules go in there and you can create more of each kind of things, right? So you can create more uh, route tables or security lists, right? And we have, again, we have done that in some of the previous uh, modules. So what is this internal DNS? Well, uh, the VCN uh, uh, private domain name system DNS or internal DNS enables instances to use host names instead of private IP addresses to talk to each other. So there are two kinds of options which are available. One is called internet and VCN resolve, resolver. This is the default choice for new VCN. So if you don't do anything, uh, you would be using this kind of internal DNS uh, resolver. If you want to use something else, you, there's an option to use custom resolvers. Now, custom resolver lets instances resolve the host name of host in your on-premises network uh, through IPsec, VPN, or Fast Connect, right? So in many cases, you have your databases instances running. They need to go to your on-prem environments where probably you are running your own DNS server site right? and do the name resolution using those DNS servers and not the native ones which are available in uh, OCI. Now, when you create uh, uh, a VCN or a subnet or an instance, you can specify a DNS label. If you don't specify one, we create it for you. So the way you do that is in a VCN, uh, there is the DNS VCN DNS label dot Oracle VCN dot com. You cannot delete this part. It's always stays, but of course you can change it, right? For subnet, you have similarly, you have more options. You can decide what the subnet, subnet DNS label looks like. And it, the, the, the VCN DNS label comes here because you, subnet is part of a VCN. And then of course this part you, again, you cannot delete. Uh, for a host, fully qualified domain name, host name, subnet name, VCN name, dot oracle VCN dot com. Seems pretty logical. Now instance fully qualified domain name results to the instances private IP address. So in previous examples, we had a local peering gateway, we were pinging a couple of instances using their private IP addresses. Instead of using the private IP address, we could have used the instance fully qualified domain names. We could have done that, right? And we could have pinged those instances using that. Now, one thing to really keep in mind is there is no fully qualified domain name for public IP addresses. So for example, uh, if you want to do SSH with host name, subnet name, VCN name, dot oracle VCN dot com, that feature is not supported. Uh, I believe it's on, on the roadmap. But right now, the instance fully qualified domain name, just keep in mind, results to the instance's private IP address. So with that, let me quickly uh, jump to the console and show you a couple of these in uh, action. So if I go to my networking tab and create a new virtual cloud network. So let's say this is my demo VCN2. Uh, right here, uh, if, of course, I need to specify my uh, cited block. Right here, uh, you can say you use DNS host names in this uh, in this uh, VCN, right? So this is required for instance host name assignment if you plan to use VCN DNS or a third party uh, DNS. This cannot be changed later on, right? If you do that, right here you can see there is a DNS uh, label and it's coming from the name I specified. But you could you could uh, you could change this, right? So you could say this is my my DNS and now you would see that the, the DNS which we are using is my DNS dot Oracle VCN dot com right so I create this particular uh, VCN and right here if I go into the DHCP options you can see that this is the because I'm I'm not using a custom resolver it is it is using internet and VCN resolver now I can change that if I click here edit I could specify uh, you know like an internet and VCN resolver or I could do like a custom resolver, right? So if I want to do a custom resolver, um, something like this, I, I could do, do it here, right? And I could I could save this change. Uh, now this is, of course, I'm not going to use uh, this uh, resolver, but just uh, it shows you uh, the options which are available. In many cases, this would be going back to your on-prem environments where you would be, um, your DNS servers would be running. 
Last thing I want to show you, show you, if we go to the compute instance and you create an instance, the same thing happens. I'm just going to create uh, a temporary instance. Uh, and if you scroll down here, all the way down, you click on advanced options. You can see some of these options here, right? So you can specify your host name, which goes into your DNS, uh, et cetera, right? So you could you could provide those uh, those uh, those uh, values here, right? As you are creating the the instance. So hopefully this gives you a good uh, idea of the different kind of internal DNS options available. Uh, the thing to keep in mind is you have an option to use a custom resolver in case you are running your on-prem DNS servers. Thank you for joining this lecture. Uh, in the next module, we'll bring together all the concepts we have learned in, in, in the VCN and conclude the lecture series. Lecture series. Thank you. Hi, everyone.